Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Duke of Italy and welcome back to another video. Today we're reviewing some more music and today we're covering the new Black Eyed Peas album, Translation. Now this is my first review of a new album and I'm pretty excited for it. So about a, a week and a half ago or something like that, I was just chilling, just on vacation, relaxing, and then I saw on Spotify a new recommendation for the new Black Eyed Peas album and I didn't know it was coming. I know Black Eyed Peas had the single Read Mo Out, and I didn't even listen to it yet, because, very frankly, I didn't care. But I saw this came out, and I absolutely had to review it. So, what's a better place to review my first new album with than a new Black Eyed Peas record? Because, of course, it's going to be chock full of bangers. So, going into this album, I found that there were a total of 10 features on it. So it's it's kind of stacked with a lot of different artists, so you'd expect a lot of different angles getting hit here. Like, you got Tyga, you got Shakira, you got a few other popular artists here and there. It's under the Will I Am label, but it's also under the Epic label, so it's it's gonna probably gonna have a pretty stacked start. And I gotta admit, I came into this album with some pretty high hopes after some of the things they did on Masters of the Sun. Uh, I don't listen to the whole album, but I know with the precedence they set with Back to Hip Hop featuring Nas, it, I expected some pretty good, some pretty good rapping, some good flow switch ups. So I gotta say, I am pretty disappointed with this album. So the album starts off with the track Reapmo, uh, aka Bad Boys for Life, and it features J Balvin. So straight off, with this song, you can kind of understand how, let's say, 80% of the album's going to go. It's a very Latin-inspired beat, uh, and it's kind of reminiscent of The Energy Never Dies' dance beat type concept, except production is definitely upped quite a bit. Also, this song is very hook-based. In fact, it's, it's reliant on it. And it starts a precedent for the rest of the album that I find pretty unappealing. Basically, the song in total is pretty dumb, but it's inoffensive. It's definitely not a song I'd recommend, but it's not completely awful. Uh, Apple comes in at the end, and he has another pretty decent verse. So at least we're going back to the Ella Funk ideas of Apple coming in with a really good verse, because he used to do that, but then he, that slowed down later in their career. So if you heard this one song you already know what half the rest of the songs in this album are like, and that is a serious detriment to how the rest of it goes. And the next song is Feel the Beat, featuring Maluma. So with this track in Ritmo, they had samples that seemed that reminded me a lot of Life of Pablo, uh, just the way they were cut up. It was, it was pretty interesting. Of course, it can't carry an album based on the samples, but, you know, it was an interesting part. So with this song, I found it pretty average, where it had some decent lyrical moments, but uh, generally it just kind of went on a little too long. Overall, it's, it's a bit of an awkward, clunky track, but I, I felt like if I was in a club scene and I heard this, I wouldn't mind it at all. Easily the highlight of this track is Taboo coming in with his verse, and he has a flow switch up right in the middle of it. And while it's obviously not a super monumental feat here, you're not exactly getting Wu-Tang level quality, but it, Taboo definitely comes in and he pulls his weight. Next track is Mamacita, featuring Ozuna and J. Ray Soul. Even though the song is a little less hook-reliant than Ritmo, I think the hook is actually the best part here. I personally thought that the pre-hook was pretty weak here. The next track is Girl Like Me featuring Shakira. And before I talk about this that much, I want to say I really enjoy Shakira. I think that her singles are strong. I love them. I think they, that she has a lot of talent. And I think that she's got some good hooks here and there. But somehow... On this whole album, when I was looking forward to this song the most, Shakira ruins the song. So Shakira really only comes in for the hook, and she has one verse towards the end of the song. But the way she uses her voice, it's her vocal timbre is not where it should be normally. I would want to compare her parts here to uh, a song such as Empire, where she reaches those softer moments in the higher notes that are almost kind of whisper-like in quality. But in here, she tries to keep her tone there, but it's honestly to her detriment. I think that she just sounded very weak on this track. This song has a very poor bridge that shows up once or twice. Uh, Apple has a verse towards the end, which is just mediocre. But I thought Taboo had another verse that was actually pretty good. So other than Taboo coming in with a good verse, this is not a song I'd recommend. This next song is called Vida Loca, featuring Nicky Jam and Tyga, of all people. So it interpolates Can't Touch This by MC Hammer, which while... It's kind of a meme song and not exactly the highest quality. I thought the way they used it was actually pretty tasteful and pretty interesting. And also with that, I thought the chorus of the song was pretty strong. Unfortunately, almost the entire rest of the song lagged behind a little bit. It just felt kind of weak. 
but in the tail end of the song you get the taiga feature then apple and taboo all coming in at the same at different times and they all sounded pretty good the next song is called no manana featuring el alpha and i gotta admit i've never heard el alpha before the song and maybe he his vocal style works better on his own tracks but I just found it extremely annoying the way his voice was kind of high pitched and just it was just odd. It didn't seem to match what the Black Eyed Peas were going for. Also, this song is very chorus and hook reliant. That's just kind of how they work at this point. I actually thought the hook and the chorus were actually pretty good here, but you can't use that to carry a whole song. I thought the fourth verse on this song was actually really strong, just lyrically. Uh, Apple had a verse that was good for the most part until uh, one of his rhymes that I thought was really weak which apple tends to do every once in a while where he'll just rhyme something that doesn't make a lot of sense uh this next song is probably my favorite track on the whole album it's called don't to love featuring j ray soul uh this song is led by j ray soul it's very much like a uh, inspired by something like meet me halfway or a fergie led track from the previous albums of the black eyed peas but um unlike those j ray soul has some talent and she she does a good job on this track and i gotta say uh, it's definitely for the benefit this track never really floored me and there was a line where she rhymed marijuana and pina colada i just to seem kind of hip i guess uh that it was kind of a cringier line but other than that the, out, the song's pretty inoffensive it's a little derivative but i i certainly liked it this next track is called celebrate so this track doesn't have any features on it and uh just going into it it's already derivative so that's kind of just how it goes it's definitely the most trap inspired track on the album so far which i'm glad it's finally breaking up the sort of latin beats that almost every single song on here has unfortunately the trap beat does not save it uh, some of the songs sang by jere i think she did a pretty good job here but lyrically the song lacks entirely uh will i am has autotune that reminds me of how we sounded on the beginning which is a terrible sign will i am has a line in there that i don't want to say because i don't want to be demonetized it's not like i get money from this anyway but i really hope he means a fist bump or something like that because otherwise i'm probably gonna vomit uh the next track is toto bueno featuring piso 21 this song kind of suffers from the same issues that the entire rest of the album has it's chorus reliant uh taboo has a weaker verse here same with will i am they, neither of them sound pretty great the only good part about this song that uh kind of kept me going was it was very bassy so i kind of got with that but that was that was about it uh the next track is called duro hard featuring becky g i thought the chorus here was pretty good but the whole track got old after a while uh, this track is a good example of the group falling back into their old ways over and over and over again whatever the sample or the hook is i don't know if it's a sample genius didn't say it was a sample but it sounds like one um it was not not good placement here i think it'd be better if they just cut it uh, the next song is mabuti featuring french montana and contrary to what you might think the track is called it's actually apparently referring to soul uh, i thought the intro was pretty strong here and there's some really spacey synths that sounded really cool unfortunately there's this air horn that comes in and it just kind of falls off it's it's modified in post obviously it just wastes your time like the spacey synths had so much going for them and it's cut short with this air horn and it made me kind of sad because I was looking forward to the rest of this track. It kind of had a cloud rap kind of idea behind it with the synths, but now it's gone. Uh, this is the longest track on the album. I think there are definitely a few bits you could cut. Uh, Apple, he was rapping in Tagalog, which is pretty cool. I mean, his flow isn't amazing, but just the fact that it's something other than Spanish on this album, I can respect a lot because it came off as a bit of a gimmick for the Black Eyed Peas, but I mean, this is something Apple kind of does. I have to admit, though, there's a line where someone says, Coop with the head blowing off Nirvana. And I, I after hearing that, I had to pause the song and just ponder for a moment what I just heard. Uh, he really just made a suicide joke about Kurt Cobain on a Black Eyed Peas album. I don't know why. I think it was pretty tasteless, and it kind of pulled the track back for me. I couldn't really get with it after that point. The next track is I Woke Up. It interpolates Flawless, which is the Beyonce track. It pretty much co copies the line, I Woke Up Like This. Uh, I just saw the song kind of pointless. It, just, it was just poor songwriting all throughout, and it's just a trend that's followed through the entire album. Uh, we've reached the worst track on the album, Get Loose Now. Uh, I gotta admit, this song is almost entirely ad-libs. I thought Lean For Real by Playboy Cardi was bad because it's just Lean For Real over and over again. It's Hook. 
but this track is just ad libs over and over. Never have I ever thought I would complain about there not being enough hook, but for the amount of hook that's here, it's. I wish there was more because I just skip half the ad libs. There, there's never been a more skippable track ever. It's like if you want to make an interlude track, but forgot to make anything smart about it. Uh, the next track is Action. Uh, this song I found a little bit disrespectful with Well I Am, trying to copy the ad libs of Kanye. But, you know, I mean, I'm, at least he's trying. I thought the verses were pretty decent here, but unfortunately the rest of the song was really just terrible. I think Taboo's flow switch here was uh, pretty good when he came out on his verse. But um, with a song that's hook reliant, again, I think that they needed a better hook. It just wasn't strong enough, so the song kind of lost me. So now we reach the track News Today, and it, if you guys know about my opinion of the Black Eyed Peas, I think their worst moments were that they tried to copy Where's the Love three different times on their albums. And while it's not up to me to police their creative decisions, Every single time that happened, it just it just pissed me off more and more. And seeing news today, like two seconds in, I was like, oh no, they're copying it again. Uh, but, and I mean but, I think that this is their best copy of the song yet. Is it a great song? I would say no. It's a little placeless, especially on this album. But in terms of how it's done, it comes across as much better. Uh, most of the song is about a particular world event that I can't mention for fear of uh, losing monetization. But I think you guys can tell what it is by the fact that we all had to stay in our homes for such a long time. I'd say the track is forced because every other version of this track was super forced. But uh, the timeliness of it actually comes across pretty well. Uh, of course, they're not saying that much here. It's just kind of pessimistic, just kind of being like, well, how are things going to get better? Uh, but, you know, it's it's kind of introspective. I don't hate the way they're going at it. Uh, it mentions essential workers, and they praise them for essentially like sacrificing themselves for minimum wage, uh, which I know the Black Eyed Peas have had uh, a lot of weaker points about economic commentary in their past, especially with Now Generation. But I think this was a it was a good thing to point out. I mean, not a lot of people would have pointed this out in their tracks right now. So, I mean, I, I kind of appreciate it. Of course, they're not exactly flooring me at any point in the song. But I thought this was a sweeter point on the track listing. And it definitely kept the album from being completely terrible. So, yeah, that's the, uh, the second best track. I never thought I'd be saying a Where's the Love copy is the second best track on a Black Eyed Peas album. But, um... My hopes were pretty low. So, Translation by Black Eyed Peas. Um, I'm not going to beat around the bush. It's it's bad. Um, it's honestly much worse than I thought it would be. I thought they'd progress past what they did before. Um, essentially, this was just trying to hop on the Bad Bunny hype train. Um, it flops. It flops almost every single time. The beats are way over repetitive. Uh, the production choices are a little on the weaker side. A lot of the verses are just too weak to pass on a modern hip-hop album. Uh, J-Ray Soul carried her weight a lot of the time here. Uh, half the features, of which there were a lot of features, were just not good enough. Um, so I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think a Black Eyed Bees album was incredibly disappointing. And uh, this is earning my first ever sheesh. So yeah, that was a letdown. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. It helped me out a lot. So that's it. I hope you guys have a good day.